Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how you can use the Azure Virtual Machine Scheduler or AVMS by Smicker Software to easily create an orchestration task. And by that I mean creating a task in which you specify certain events to happen in a specific order. So for example, to start or stop VMs in a specific sequence or to check whether or not a process or a service is running and what to do in the event of an error or a failure. Okay, so let's get started. Once you've launched the application and it's finished scanning your environment, you'll see the following screen. To begin, just click on the Virtual Machines icon and a new window will open up listing all your VMs. From here you can see the VM name, its status, its size and OS, the service or resource group it's in, the IP address, the VNet and the type of VM that it is, whether that's an ASM Classic or an ARM Virtual Machine, and of course the subscription it's in. OK, so to begin, all you need to do is place a tick in the checkbox against the virtual machine you want to target, or double click any virtual machine. You can also select a few VMs at a time, hit the spacebar, and it'll tag those as well. Once you've selected all the VMs you want to target, just right click anywhere on the screen and select Create Orchestration. So on the left hand side you can see all the virtual machines we have to work with. To begin, just select the virtual machine you want to start with and add it to the sequence. Your next step is to determine what action you want to perform against that virtual machine. So selecting the drop down arrow against the action, you can see there are a few options. You can check for a process, check a service, start the VM, stop the VM, or test for a ping reply. So in this example, I'll just select to start the VM. Your next step is to determine what to do in the event of an error. So if for whatever reason it fails to start the VM, what should happen? You have a few options here as well. You can ignore and continue, retry three times and abort, retry three times and then continue, send an email and abort, send an email and continue, or wait any number of seconds and retry. So this will, deter this will be up to uh, you whether uh, this event failing is a catastrophic task, in which case it should abort, or if it's not that big a deal, it should just ignore and continue. So that's what I'll select in this example. Uh, the next step I want in this orchestration task is to select prod VM04, and I want this to stop. And again, it's not that important, so if it fails, just retry it three times and continue. Then what I wanted to do is have a look at prod VM05. And I wanted to check that a specific process is running. So I'll click on check for process. It'll go off and make a connection to VM05 and list all the actual running processes. So I will have this check and make sure that the TI worker process is running and click OK. So what will happen is once this starts and that stops, the next step is to go off and check for the TI worker process on prod VM05. And what should happen in the event that it doesn't exist? Uh, so for me, I'll consider this catastrophic and I'll say retry three times and abort the whole process. Otherwise, move on to the next step and I'll select prod VM06, I'll add it to the sequence, and I'll have it look for a service. Okay, so here you can see all the services running on prod VM06. Some are stopped, some are running as you can see. So I'll find a service that I wanted to look for, I'll just say DPS, and OK. So the next step in the event is to go off to prod VM06 and check that the DPS service is running. And what should happen if it's not? I'll just say uh, ignore and continue. It's not that big a deal. I can then go back to my list of VMs and continue adding as, as required. So I'll add prod, sorry, dev VM07 and I'll have it start and then I'll have it send an email and continue if it fails. I can then 
have a few options along here. So I, if for whatever reason I've mucked up the sequence and actually devvm07 should be second in the list, I can select it and just using the arrows, I can move it up a list. Once you've finished creating your orchestration task, just click on the tick to continue. Give the, uh, the schedule or the orchestration task a name. I'll just call it test task. Give the job a description and click OK. OK again. And here is where you specify when you want this orchestration task to happen. So click new and determine a new trigger. I'll have this run once. But you can also have this schedule to run daily, weekly, or monthly. That's up to you. I'll just have this run as a one-time event. Uh, I'll select the date and time. I'll just have this scheduled for tomorrow at 9 a.m. And OK. OK again. And the scheduled task has been created and will execute as per the schedule specified. And you're back on the original screen. You can of course go back to the home screen and click on the jobs icon. This window will list all your scheduled tasks and your orchestration tasks. So here is the task we just created. You can of course right click on it, enable and disable. You can edit the schedule, run it immediately, delete it, or you can manage it. If you select to manage it, it just takes you back to the sequence and orchestration events you created and you can change them around according to how you need. So that'll go off and run according to the schedule and it'll email you the results. So as you can see guys, pretty easy, not much to it. Uh, you can create really long or complicated events and uh, make it work however you need to. So if you're interested in the software, just uh, visit our website at www.smicker.com and you can download a 30-day trial. All right, thanks for watching, guys.